Let's begin a discussion then on this relationship between angular velocity, angular acceleration, etc. And uh, let's keep in mind that we have theta, that's our angular position, and then angular velocity is the derivative of theta with respect to time, and angular acceleration is the derivative of omega with respect to time. But we've seen similar relationships like this before. We had position, and I'm just going to go with one dimension for the sake of argument. We had position x, and then we knew that velocity was equal to the derivative of x with respect to time, and acceleration was the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And we came out with relationships this way that you might recall. So let's stick with the first ones. The first ones were the kinematic equations. And the kinematic equations assume that the acceleration was equal to a constant. And then we came out with some equations, and you may recall these. We had x equals x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. We had v is equal to v0 plus at. And we had uh, v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta x. All of those coming from, and there are others, but all of these coming from the fact that acceleration was constant. Well, if alpha is equal to a constant, then I should have similar equations. And those equations would be things like theta, because that's the counterpart to x, right? So theta is equal to theta naught plus omega naught t plus 1 half alpha t squared. And omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. And then omega squared equals omega naught squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. So these same relationships are going to hold. Same equations, I've just taken position and replaced it with angular position. Velocity replaced it with angular velocity. Acceleration replaced it with angular acceleration. The other thing we want to keep in mind, these are all assume that alpha or a was equal to a constant, but we had back here, we had acceleration, which was a function of position, and we found relationships for that, and I'm not going to give those to you in the earlier book, Accelerations are a function of position. We'll have similar things here. What if alpha is a function of position, angular position? What if angular acceleration is a function of angular position? You're going to have these exact same relationships, only change your omegas, change your v's to omegas, and your al a's to alphas, and your, and your x's to thetas, and you'll get the same thing. Remember, we had acceleration was a function of velocity, and we got some relationships. We have the same thing here. Alpha is a function of angular velocity, and we're going to get some relationships, very much like we did in the first chapter or the first few videos in dynamics where we had those, those accelerations as functions of position or velocity. Now we're going to have angular accelerations as functions of angular positions and angular velocities. Exact same integrals. Turn the a's into alphas, the v's into omegas, and the x's into thetas and everything's exactly the same. All right, so take a look at those. And your kinematic relationships are all there. There are other kinematic equations that I didn't put here. Just change your names and everything will work out fine. And we're going to see this actually later on. We're going to talk about kinetic energy and work and power and all of those things that we talked about in, in the translational case. We'll have angular counterparts and we're going to bring all that together. All right, so something to look forward to. I know you're all excited. All right, thank you. Any comments? Put them in the comments below. Any questions? Put them in the comments below. Thank you.